Spring breaks a nice time. James, spring break. So, and I hope you guys have some fun times over spring break. So, one week from today, we'll be like, dude, can't wait. Gotcha? So, I think, shh, I think it, if everything looks correct to me, we will Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, looks like we will have some sort of review and Thursday as well. And then Friday, we will do the test on this unit. I think that's what the schedule I will not be here Friday next week. Or excuse me, not Friday. <coughs> I will not be here Thursday next week. Excuse me, but I'll be back on Friday. Um, so I would say definitely make sure that you have the comfort. And the, the hard thing is a lot of times a student will say, gosh, if you were just here that day, I would have been able to do better on the test, which I call bull, you know, what he on, because I call it bull and then shift. Uh, I, I, had to make, I had to make that go through my head before I said it out loud because, um, um, So, if you ever take Latin, the terminology is called bovis turcus. That means that means bull dung in Latin. So, I took Latin for two years in high school. Not your wife. Bovis turcus. You remember that one? Turcus means dung. Bovis means bovine, which is bull. Okay. All right. Would it be okay if I went over the four problems I had assigned you? Yeah. No, don't do it. We don't want to see it. Oh, I, I took roll. I took roll. We're good. Ah, sorry. I'm discombobulated for right now. All right. Here we go. So you have something to write with? Yes. Something to jot down with? Make it look right? All right. So this is problem number 12. This is on page 69. Or worksheet something you can't see. Uh, they have y equals x squared minus 3x minus 18. And again, guys and girls, we are going through quadratics like wildfire. I mean, we are hitting it hard because this, these steps that you learn here will provide more opportunities later. And, and parabolas or quadratics or however you want to call it really does have a lot to do with applications outside of the school world, okay? Now, I'm not going to say that you're going to be walking down the street going, oh, sweet, look, there's a parabola. You're not going to do that, and that's okay. Only people that are like math nerds like me that are like, doing that quick. oh, check a look, I'll take a look at that. Um, there was a, uh, when we went to Disney World over Thanksgiving, there was this one ride, and you, I, I wish it was, I wish I had more time but you go in and you get to, you have like three minutes. You get to design your roller coaster, and it tells you how um, how much energy you have, and then you try this, and it says, well, no, this won't be enough energy to get back up this next hill type of thing. So you're able to design it, you create loops, and then they put you in this simulator. It looks like this big robotic arm, and it mimics all of the what your roller coaster is, which it's pretty cool. Um, I thought. If I had like a couple hours, I would have a roller coaster be through the roof. Because I'd be like, because everything was math tools. It would talk to you about this is what the force of gravity is, this is the amount of G forces that are exerted on your body if this happens. Warning, if you do this, this exerts six G's. The normal person passes out, you know, after three G's. Um, so you don't want a roller coaster to pull six G's. Though it'd be kind of fun to have, you know, everybody pass out on the roller coaster. And whoever didn't becomes an astronaut because they can have some weird ability in their body not to pass out and keep the blood from, you know, draining from their skull and going to the rest of their body. You should have just made a centrifuge. <laughs> well, I had my daughter on the ride, too, so I didn't want to go, <laughs> you know, it was earlier in the morning, it would ruin the whole day, so couldn't make it that bad. Uh, all right, so it says, our directions on this, let's see, give an equation in standard, given an equation in standard form, that's in standard form, descending order where we could find a, b, and c. Find the factored form of the quadratic function. Give the x-intercepts and 
the vertex for each. Okay? So there's things about this problem that we recognize. It's raised, it's second, it's raised to the second power. It's a parabola. It opens up. Our A value is 1. Our B value is negative 3. Our C value is negative 18. Um, they want us to factor it. So if we were to factor it, if we remember, if we multiply this and this to get our magic number of negative 18. In order to get a negative number, you know that your two numbers you're multiplying together. One has to be what and one has to be what? One has to be positive one has to be negative. Okay? And so in not any particular order, I'm going to list our factors of 18 in which one of them has to be negative and one of them has to be positive. So if we add them together, which one is going to work to give me a negative 3? 3 and 6. Which one has to be negative in order for it to work? Three. Yeah, so 3 and negative 6, right? That's going to be how that works. Casey, you got a question or are you? Offering the support. Cool. Um, so if we go through and we just go to factor this, we're going to get x squared um, plus 3x minus 6x minus 18. And remember, this and this are the front and the back end, and the 3 minus 6x are what need to be put together in order to get there. Are we okay? Uh, then we look for what I have in common here, and I have an x, and then I have x plus 3 left behind, and then here. I have what in common between those two? I have a 6, but be careful. It's a negative 6. Remember that that third term is negative. Most of the time, I have to factor negative out. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the negative. I apologize. So that gives me an x what? X plus 3. Yeah, exactly. Good, Casey. So I get x plus 3. So then the factored form, a lot of people are getting stuck here. They're like, oh, I'm done. No, I have this and this in common, so factor them out. So I have x plus 3, and then I have x minus 6. And that is our factored form of this, meaning if I were to multiply this back together through you know, doing FOIL or whatever, I would get this. But this here tells me where it crosses the x-axis. Where does it cross the x-axis, and how would you go about getting there? Where would this cross the x-axis? Where does this parabola cross the x-axis, and how do we get it there? What do you got? Negative 3 and what? No, no, no. Oh, that's y-axis. Y-axis. Yeah, good. So you got one of the axes down. So I agree. Y-axis is 0, negative 18. And we get that from here, right? Good. Good guy. I like that. But negative 3 and? Nope. 6. Right? So we set each of these equal to 0. So we go x plus 3 equals 0, x minus 6 equals 0. So I get x equals negative 3, which was already stated, and x equals 6, which was already stated. And those are points. So if we wanted to make it a point, it would be negative 3 comma 0 and 6 comma, or yeah, 6 comma 0. And that's where it would cross the x-axis. OK? So we're answering the questions. We gave more than we, we didn't necessarily they didn't ask us for this, but, you know, putting extra information, we're okay. Um, then they want us to find the vertex. How? We have two different ways that we can get there, and both are going to result in the same answer. One way is I can find what is halfway in between negative 3 and 6, and that's the x component of my vertex. The other way is to go negative b over 2a. So negative b over 2a. And then plug in. Right? So let's see what happens. I get negative negative 3. Why is it negative negative 3? Yeah, 3 is already negative, and that negative already has to come along. And then 2 times my a value is 1. So it looks like I'm going to get 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is the same thing as 1.5 or 1 and 1 half. Do you agree? I'm leaving it as 3 over 2 for right now. What should I do with that 3 over 2 in order to generate the answer for the y component of the vertex? Plug it in. Plug it in. Okay? Now, guys and girls, the anxiety of fractions... You have to realize it's okay to try and apply yourself, and let's get better at fractions. I have no problem having you guys get better and better at fractions. 
Don't let fractions become your feared enemy. Don't let decimals become that. There are more fractions and more decimals than there are whole numbers. Okay, even though they're both infinite uh, number sets, you have to realize there's more decimals and fractions that you're going to deal with in a real life situation. Okay. One point five, you like it? I agree with you. I like one point five. So, if if that would make it easier, being that this one comes down to a exact decimal, and it's not a, a you know continuing or repeating decimal, that could be plugged in. So I could plug in three over two. Or I could plug in one point five, square it, minus three times one point five. Minus 18. So let's see, 15 times 15 is 225. That means that 1.5 times 1.5, I'd have to move the decimal twice, so it would be 2.25. Does that make sense how I just did that? So 15 times 15 is 225. If it's 1.5 and 1.5, I multiply those together, I get 2.25. So let's squeeze this in, I'll squeeze it in here. 2.25 minus, uh, that looks like uh, 4.5. Minus 18? Ay, ay, ay. All right. You have to trust me on this one. That's negative 2.25 minus 18, which is going to give me negative 20.25. Look at that. That's my vertex. It's nastier. It's uglier. Do you guys want to know a really good place where you see a parabola in action? What? On a graph. Y'all ridden in a car or a bus or a train or a plane? No. The braking distance. No. Should try it someday. I recommend it. The the braking mechanism on any automobile or car or anything like that is a parabola. So a lot of times, if you look at if you look at the magazine uh, Motor Week or Car and Driver or anything. So they start, you know, those are always fun to look at because like, dude, do the Lamborghinis a lot? Diablo. 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 Hey, you're reading it, and you're like, oh, sweet. And it tells you acceleration, tells you braking distance, all those kind of things. Um, <coughs> there's one of two ways that we can get braking distance. You could get up to 150 miles an hour and then slam the brakes on and see if it works. Or you could realize it goes with a parabola, and you can do the braking distance at 0, 0. You can do the braking distance at 5 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour. It doesn't sound quite as fun, but it really comes down to what would the braking distance of this car be, or this motorcycle be. And then you can predict it. And there's one thing that uh, when the police are investigating a car accident, there's a few things that they're looking at. Now you have to, you have, their equation takes into account road conditions. Okay, if it's a dirt road, gravel road, cement road, asphalt road, asphalt road covered with snow, rain, whatever. They have all of these things that they put into the parameter which d distinguishes the braking distance. And you know, if someone gets into an accident, it's gotta be somebody else's fault. Everyone's innocent, right? So how fast are you going? Oh, I feel like 12 miles an hour. Really? Because your skid marks are 87 feet. Whoa. Okay. Well, I, I might have been doing like 15. No, you were doing 55 miles an hour, and it's approaching 25 miles an hour. So how do you know? Because the physics doesn't lie. Okay. And it all goes along with the quadratic equation that the police officers use. Now the police officers are going, okay, we have a vertex of this, we have this as a second point. No, the police officer already have a given equation. Where did that given equation come from? They didn't just like say, uh, this seems good enough. They had somebody who had, was an actuarial scientist, which is a mathematician with a fancy name, who went through and realized this is how it works. And cars of different makes and models all have different types of braking distances, but they all relate to a parabola. So think about that. Think about that. 
If you're doing 55 in a 25 mile an hour zone, you get an accident, you're gonna get these fancy chrome things that look like bracelets that are connected that go behind your back. <laughs> That's hard. They're not bedazzled either. So, you know, that, that's one of those things. There, you know, the thing about driving is there is criminal driving. If you are, whether you are driving from the scene of a crime that you committed or not, you can be cited as a criminal and go to jail because of your driving. You go far enough over that speed limit, you know, a lot of, you know, I realize there's all these videos going, dude, this guy's getting tased. He's getting hit by 19 people. Okay, I get you. But there's also people that are breaking rules out there that, you know, should be going to jail. And I get you. There's, there are wrongfully convicted people all over the place. I saw it was the latest one that came out where it was a guy, his wife was in labor. I mean, like, they're going to the hospital. He is on 911 saying, hey, I'm being pulled over right now, but my wife is in labor. And the, the person on the other end of the phone said, pull over. And they take the guy down at gunpoint, and they tase him. And his wife goes and gives birth to the baby in the front seat of the car. <laughs> yeah, common sense sometimes. Wait, who's like that? It's hard for me to say. Was the person who was driving the car breaking the law? Yes. Yes, yeah, she, she should have been able to hold back. Hold that baby. Yeah. <laughs> here, here, chew a piece of gum. <laughs> Take your mind off it. <laughs> Let's sing Row, Row, Remote. Okay, Row, Row. All right. We got kind of a lot of information from this prop. Do you like? Are we good? All right. So then, shh, number, number 13. Number 13. <laughs> All right. Shh. We want to put it in factored form. We want to put it in factored form. What do, excuse me, what do we have as our first thing to pull out on this one? I like where you're thinking, Steve. But 3, 12, and 15 have what in common? They have a 3 in common, so they have a greatest common factor on this one. Okay? So if you take that greatest common factor, that takes us down to this. Is that okay? And that becomes a different scenario to factor. Okay? So if we factor this right here, I have my magic number is negative 5, so 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative. And so the factors of 5 are 1 and 5. Is there a way that I can add 1 and 5 together, 1 being positive, 1 being negative, that gives me positive 4? Yeah. What is that? Positive 5 and negative 1. Good. I like it. All right. So remember, this 3, this three kind of comes along for the ride. So I have uh, x squared uh, minus 1x plus 5x minus 5. I get this, which is, agree? And then what do I factor out here? No, no, next. Fine. And then I have what in common between the two? And I'm left with this. Hey, what is this three doing? It does what? It is a GCF, but what does it do when I graph it? The 135 thing, it's tripled then, right? Cool. So where does this cross the x-axis? Um, positive 1 and negative 5. OK, which is 1 comma 0 and negative 5 comma 0. Now, we can say, oh, well, it crosses the y-axis at what? 0, negative 15. Okay, so this is not the most important thing in the world, but it's fine. It's extra information. Okay, um, we should find halfway in the between negative five and one, or I could do the negative b over two a. What, whatever way you feel is appropriate, do. 
Uh, negative b over 2a would be negative 12 over 2 times 3, which is going to be negative 12 over 6, which is going to be what? Negative 2. And we got to plug it in, right? Okay, so if I take that negative 2, plug it in here, what's negative 2 squared? Positive 4, careful. Positive 4 times 3 is? 12. And then I have uh, 12 times negative 2, which is? Negative 24. Good job. Minus 15. All right. 2 minus 24, you can do it on a calculator or do it in your head. It's negative 24. Negative 20, or... Negative 12 minus 24 is negative 12. Negative 12 minus 15 is negative 27. That's a comma. So there's my vertex. And again, there's a lot of things we know about this. It, the 135 is tripled. Our vertex is negative 2, negative 27. Our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. Where it crosses the y-axis is 0, negative 15. Where it crosses the x-axis are real roots, 1 comma 0 and negative 5 comma 0. So there's a lot of information about this. Now, negative 2 comma negative 27 doesn't fit on most of our graphs that we have because the ones I print out for here are from negative 10 to positive 10. So this happens outside of it. So if this was given to you on a test, and I'm pretty sure the ones that we'll give you on the test are still going to work between the negative 10 and positive 10, I saw some interesting ones on the last test. Someone gave me like an answer of 3, negative 56. And it's like, whoo, should fit on the graph. You're off. All right. Um, let's see. Number 16, give the vertex y-intercept x-intercepts for the given quadratic. Yes. So, I would say like something like this, I would not have you graph. I would probably have you graph some on the test that would work within the negative 10, positive 10 grid. But I, would, I don't think I'd give you something quite like this. Now, in the world of science, if you're doing something like this and this happens, that's where you have to do that scale factor. You know, you're, you're trying to you count by fives or count by tens or count by twos or whatever. You know, that might work better for you. All right. Uh, 16, are we doing all right? Yeah. All right, give, find the vertex, find the y-intercept, find the x-intercepts. Let's do the easy one. Where is across the y-axis? Uh, perfect. Mac, you have got that down. You will not miss it. I love it. All right. Uh, I could find the x-axis. That's fine if I wanted to. Let's find where it crosses the x-axis. Does this problem have a greatest common factor? No, 4, negative 8, negative 5 only have 1 in common, so our greatest common factor is 1. Oh, who cares? So my magic number is negative 20. In order to get a negative, I have to have a positive or negative. The factor is 20, 1 to 20, 2 to 10, 4 to 5. Is there a way one of those could be positive, one of those could be negative, that add together to give me negative 8? 2 and 10? Which one's negative? Negative 10. There you go, negative 10, positive 2. So we can go 4x squared plus 2x minus 10x minus 5. Could I add minus 10x here and plus 2x here? Yep. yep. All right, what do I have in common between those two? 4x. 2x. Good. So that gives me 2x plus 1. What do I factor in this case? You're a pro on this one. What's the factor here? KCC. What do I have in common? Shout out, anybody? Negative five. Negative five. Love it. And that changes the signs. Notice I have 2x plus 1 on both of those now, so I factor 2x plus 1 out. And I have a what left? <laughs> Love it. Uh, hey, where's across the x axis? Set each of these equal to 0. Solve it. So minus 1 divided by 2, so I get x equals negative half. And on this one, I get uh, 2x minus 5 equals 0. So add 5 divided by 2, so x equals 5 over 2, which is uh, 2.5. So across the x-axis at 
negative half, negative 2.5. So negative half comma zero and 2.5 or two and a half or five fourths or five halves. Two x plus one. Yeah, this is equal to zero. So that each of those equal to zero. Oh, uh, what else we got? Oh, y intercept we got. Where's across the x? Oh, we gotta find the vertex. So what's halfway between negative half and two point five? No idea. Something in half of it. All right. So I'm gonna go negative b over two a. So I get negative negative eight over two times four. Agree? Why is it negative negative eight? Because it wants to be. No, that's not quite right. Why is it negative negative eight? Uh, because negative, there's negative b over 2a. Yeah, so the negative b, that's the one that comes along, and then that comes along. Negative negative eight is positive eight. Eight over eight is? Oh, sweet. This is going to be easier. One's our x component. I need to plug in. One squared? One. Four times one? Four. Negative eight times one? Negative eight. Minus five? Negative four, negative four, negative nine. Woo! Vertex. Shoot. Time for a lot of information. Can I move on? Wait. 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 That should have landed in the gauge is now gonna be in the camp. I'm awake. Moving on. All right, last one. Last one, then we get a stretch break. Is that all right? Hey, this one's special. Why is this one special? It's what? It's already factored. I love it. Shh. So if it's already factored, I can figure out where it crosses the x-axis pretty easily. Agree? So the x-axis crossing is this. Reese, how did I just get there? Yeah, because it's already factored. So I can go x minus 1 equals 0 and solve it. Yeah. And I can go x plus 7 and solve it. You agree? Mm -hmm. Everyone, anyone with it? Can't talk. Sorry if I can't talk today. <laughs> Speaking gibberish, that's how I roll. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Hey, does anyone know where this is going to cross the y-axis? How would I get there? So you're, you're thinking about multiplying the whole thing out? Yeah. I like it. But Mac, you're going to get this one. Ready? You're with me. Ready? Still watching? Yeah. Negative 1 times 7 is what? Negative 7. Negative 7. So this right here, if I multiply those together, I get 0 comma negative 7, which is my y-axis crossing. I didn't have to multiply the whole thing out to get there. Hmm. Sometimes a little shortcut might work for you. Uh, what's the number halfway between 1 and negative 7? I don't know. 3.5. I, 3.5, I agree with that. If there's probably 7, let's take a look. Let's see, if I had negative 7 here, I have negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. Right? So basically our graph is here and here. So what's halfway between? So this is my 0. So I'm going to come in 1. I'm going to come in 1. Still with me? Come in one, come in one. Still with me? Come in one, come in one. What's this? Negative one, negative two. Negative three. Negative three. And it is a median. Good. So the x component of my vertex is negative three. It's a proud, uh, that's a parenthesis. Reese, that's a parenthesis, okay? All right. All right. If I take negative three, plug it in, I should get the y component of my vertex. Negative three minus one is? Negative 3 minus 1 is? Negative 4. I think that's what you're trying to say. Uh, negative 3 times 7 is? Or negative 3 plus 7 is? 4. Negative 4 times 4 is? There's my vertex. Hey, wait a minute. This look, look at how much work this one took. And this one took that much. And this one took that much. Holy moly. Sometimes it might not take as much work if it's factored. Sweet. Caroline.
What's the name? Bob, Bob, Bob. All right. I'm going off of our notes from yesterday. If you have the notes, get it out. Let's take a look. Let's decipher the mystery. We're going we're gonna to be hunting this. If you need an extra sheet, I might have a couple extra. Oops. Come get it if you need it. And you were gone yesterday. I won't make it. Oh, I have some homework for you. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Remind me. Anybody else? You good? Gage, you all right? You know what? Same as yesterday. Anybody else? All right. All right. We have a bunch of tools. We have a bunch of tools. Now, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think we had gotten through example three yesterday. Am I correct? Am I good? Did we get through example three yesterday? Yeah, and so I'm looking at example four, five, six. I need to get through that. As soon as I'm done with those, we're done, done. But I need your help in this adventure. You still with me? This is example four. We have an adventure. In a parabola, we have x-intercepts of this. And it goes through. We have this point, this random point. Okay, shh. Guys and girls, some of you talk too much. We are we are mystery hunters on this one. We have a parabola. The x-intercept is 2 comma 0, 6 comma 0. And it goes through the point 7 comma 15. Does it say that the vertex is 7 comma 15? Tell me out. Yes. Does it say the vertex is 7 comma 15? Does it say, read it, listen up, in example four, a parabola with x-intercepts 2, 0, and 6, 0, yeah. no. that goes through the point 7, 15. Is 7, 15 the vertex? No. 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 That's just some random point on the graph. So if I were to graph this parabola, I don't know, it might go like this, okay? And we have where it crosses the x-axis like this. And then here's this point. At 7, 15. It's just an arbitrary point. It's a second point or third point that they've given us for this parabola. So let's try and solve the mystery with the tools that we have. And I bet you we can. Let's, uh, let me erase this because I want to use it for more space. Okay. All right. So. Things I know in the back of my head. I know that I have standard form. I got that. Okay. Um, I know I have this. That's the factored form, right? And they have that label as H and K. I don't know that. I think that's wrong. And then there's this one. So we have all of those. So let's let's do this. Let's do this. I think we can do this. This is let's label. I have x y. I have x y. I have x y. Those are all points. Agree? Okay. Um, are any of those points going to be h k? No. No. Why not? The what? They don't have an h or a k. They're, but what's the big reason? What's the big reason I can't label it h k right now? Reese, you know this. Ray, you know this. Why can't I label them HK right now? Okay. Why can't I label any of HK? What does HK go with? Uh, it goes with X and Y, which is what? Vertex. Is anything about this problem say it's a vertex? No, we don't have a vertex. We don't know a vertex, so we can't label anything HK. So which one of those equations right now do you think we should say, let's get rid of? The bottom one. Bottom one? Okay. This isn't going to help us. That's not going to help us right now because I don't know any of my points being HK because nothing about our problem said we had the vertex. Agree? So we're going through this process of elimination. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, 
What about ABC? Is there anything about ABC we might know? What do you think, Bo? Anything about ABC we might know with the, the x-intercept, y-intercept, or the, the random point? I mean, I know x and y. I know x and y. Agree? I know x, y, x, y, x, y. So I know three points that happen to happen on this graph. Agree? Anyone stuck? Can I eliminate the first equation? I don't think we can use it. So that leaves us with this. Okay. Can we do this? Can you help me? Please? Okay. Um, hang on. I think if we went back here, shh, notice this one. X minus 1, X plus 7. That tells us where it crosses the X axis. Agree? Everyone with me still? So basically, I take x minus 1, set it equal to 0, x plus 7, set it equal to 0. I find where it crosses the x-axis. Are you still with me on this? Yes. So this example, example 4, says, hey, it crosses the x-axis at 2 comma 0 and 6 comma 0. So let's, let's build upon this. How... Am I going to take 2 comma 0 and 6 comma 0 and make it look like this? How am I going to make this problem, these points, look like that? So it basically looks like this and looks like this. How would I go backwards to make this look like this? What's x equal to on this problem? x is equal to 2, and x is equal to 6. How am I going to put that back into a binomial? Oh, we've got a mystery. What did I do with each of these in order to get to here? What did I do with these to get to here? I took x minus 1 and said equal equals 0, yes? Yeah. Added 1 to both sides. And then I took x plus 7 and said it equal to 0 and subtract 7 from both sides, right? right? So I move this over in order to get here. What do I have to do here? x equals 2 goes with what binomial? What? Yeah, baby. X equals 6 goes with that binomial, Ray. Keep your mouth shut. It's like my wife doesn't know this. X minus 6. X minus 6. Just, just kidding to my wife. All right. Hang on. We're, we're, we're getting closer in this adventure. We're getting closer in this adventure. Hmm. Huh. Hang on. So... These yield to this. These, hang on, eyes up here. These yield to this. Are these starting to look a little bit like this? Okay, so if I were to apply this, hang on, oh, I'm, I'm real close, this is cool. I have y equals a, x minus 2, x Okay. I don't think I can use the 2 comma 0 and the 6 comma 0 again. We've already used them. Gosh. This other point, 7 comma 15. Help me out. Does, does the point 7 comma 15 mean that if I had plugged 7 into an x, my y value is 15? Is that an input, output? Is that a domain range? This is tougher. This is, this is weird to think about. This is, this is changing a thought process in your neurons in your brain, which is okay. Not quite as fun as playing a video game, but it's kind of a problem-solving technique. 
Okay, I know most of you play video games of some sort. You know, a lot of times you can hit reset. Okay, but you've got through the cognitive thought process in order to beat a video game, or you find the cheat code and get past that level, right? Oh, it's too hard to get the cheat code. No. You're playing a game. Play it correctly. Don't cheat. Huh? I thought it was like up, up, down, down. I have no idea what it is. I don't play video games. I'm sorry. I wish I did. I should. All right. Hang on. So let me, let me, let me, let me. Let me point this out. <laughs> the big yellow thing is what I'm looking at. The big yellow thing is a point. The big yellow thing is a point that's not where it crosses y-axis, not where it crosses the x-axis. It's just some arbitrary point, meaning that if I were to take 7, which is an x value, are you still with me in the story? 7, which is an x value, and I plug that x value into my equation, my y value would yield 15. What do you think I should do with the big yellow circle thing with my blue equation? Yeah. Which one? Color. Purple. If I plug it into the purple, I don't have, I have x and y, so I have nothing here that's going to allow me to do that. I like your process. You're thinking, I need to plug it in someplace. Where do you start plug it in? In the blue. What? what? Oh, yeah. 15 goes into Y. How do I know that? Because it's a Y value. Okay? And then A, I have no idea. I don't have any letters A labeled up there, so A is kind of unknown, but I know I have X minus 2. Wait, 7 minus 2. And then? And then? Yeah, baby. X values plug in. Look at this. Okay, 15. And this is going to be A times 5. Where'd that 5 come from? <laughs> times 1. Where'd that 1 come from? The thingy. Thingy. Help me out on the thingy. Yeah. 7 minus 2 is 5. 7 minus 6 is 1. Wait a minute. A times 5 times 1. A times 5 times 1. A times 5, which is the same as writing? 5A, ooh, 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 hang on, hang on, oh, 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 A equals 3, wait a minute, extend the page, extending the page, okay, okay, leap of faith, ready, 1, 2, 3, I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use this. Help me out. Where are we getting to? What's A equal to? We just solved A is equal to 3. So if A is equal to 3, look what I plug in here. Y equals 3 times A minus 2. X minus 6. Guys and girls, shh. Do I know the vertex of this parabola? Yes. Uh-uh. I haven't found it yet. I know where it crosses the x-axis, and I know this arbitrary point. But now I know the equation that it works to. I don't even know the vertex. I used a mystery in order to solve a problem. This is a big leap. Guys and girls, we took things that we were unsure about. We took things that we were unsure about. We knew where across the x-axis. Those are x and y values. We knew at some random point is an x and y value. So we knew to go through our three equations and say, which ones can we eliminate? Well, if I didn't know the vertex, H and K, this has too many unknowns. The only thing I really know on this one is I know X and Y. This one also knows X and Y, and that leaves me A, B, and C. I don't know what those are. But this one, this one has X and Y values and other X and Y values. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm going off the cuff a little bit. Could we do these problems? No. I'll, I'll put it in for you. Okay. 
guys and girls, I want you to do me a favor. This was a tough problem. We walked through it. It's step by step up there. I want you to take the point three comma zero and the point four comma zero. That's where it crosses the x-axis. And then this random point of ten comma seven exists on our parabola. I want you to do that one problem for me. I want you to see if you can walk through what we have done. It's recorded. I want you to see if you can walk through what this is right here and do that for the homework. And then there's a there is a uh, that thing on Schoology. It's due Friday next week. Guys and girls, some of you still owe me some tests and quizzes. Yes. Yes. They are in the Math Science Testing Center. You have to see when it's open. Don't assume that it's open at your convenience. Don't assume that come Friday next week that you can just stroll in there going, dude, I'm here, and they start blowing trumpets and are proud of you. Okay, sometimes it's full. You have to be able to get over there and get there on your time.